throttle vlog everybody as usual I'm your host Mickey Andrade and today we're gonna to be back again working on our 335i behind me that we picked up at auction for a song and a dance sight unseen it's come a long way since we got it and since we made the first video if you guys remember in our previous video I stopped off at straight six auto dismantling in Oceanside California and picked up the upper interior for our car it's gray and really filthy I picked up all of the pieces to convert everything over to black so we've got you know our a pillars here our sunroof switch and dome lights here in black this would normally been gray on our car and a couple other little bits that we needed once all this gray stuff's out we're gonna go ahead and drop the headliner as well because we we want to recover that in some black suede so I'm gonna get cranking Guys, as you can tell, it is, well, you can't tell, but hot as heck inside this car. It's really hard to film in here because the windows are tinted pretty dark. We're gonna go ahead and go over all the bits that came out and we'll also uh, bring you guys along for the ride on the headliner, but it's pretty stuffy in there and the visibility is crap. So I'm just gonna knock this out. Okay, all the bits are removed, so now this thing is free to come down. I'll just let it down nice and gently so we don't break anything because we are reusing this. And now we got to figure out how to get it out of the car. Hopefully it comes out, it has to go in somehow, so I'm guessing it must come out through the door. Stop scratching up our new carbon fiber. Alright, so it's out. And I think quite a few people when we did the Subaru headliner said you're lucky you have a hatchback because it comes straight out the back. It's very easy. There's no way to get them out without taking the glass out. Uh, I've done a few of these now. If it has a headliner in it, it was probably done after the glass was in the car. So where there's a will, there's a way. They almost always fit out through the door at some angle. So definitely don't go pulling your glass out of your car. Try taking it out the door first. A little later. All right, well, Ricky and I are picking up with the headliner, and I want to say I've watched a couple of videos on YouTube on these headliners, and just to prepare myself for this job, this is a lot trickier than the Subaru. So, if you guys watched our how to suede wrap a headliner video that we have on our YouTube channel, that one was really straightforward. I popped the headliner out. It was made out of a like thermo molded or heat molded plastic material, and it just had like a fabric sort of. I don't know, molded into it. And so that one was really easy. I didn't have to strip anything off it. All I did was clean it off, glue it, and put the new material over top. This headliner is completely different. It has a material with a foam backing glued onto it. And this stuff's been on there since 2006. So it's uh, 14 years old and it is an absolute nightmare to get off. So as you can see, I pulled off the, the gray material, but it left behind this foam. And this foam really sucks. It just deteriorates, and what you're left with is the glue. 
So what we did was we actually got out our Eastwood uh, pneumatic rotary removal tool and we put the rubber, it's like a pinstripe remover wheel. It's kind of a, ah. kind of a rubber, I'm not sure what to call yeah, it. It is rubber. But basically I just started taking that all over this and removed it. Now I already did the, the sliding headliner sunroof cover and it was able to get all that off, but this was a plastic material and the glue came off fairly easily. This is more of like a pressed foam board. It's kind of a strange material. So we're just kind of running it over this and getting it off. And I will say that it is quite messy. This is what's come off so far. And I was coated in this stuff when Ricky just walked in. I just, <laughs> literally just cleaned most of it off of myself and swept the floor. But this is not a, an easy job. Um, so if you're planning to tackle an E90 chassis headliner, be prepared. You're gonna spend probably more time removing this old foam than actually putting the material on, yep. <laughs> the new material. Um, what I will say is I think the juice is worth the squeeze because oh, yeah, this, sure. the suede headliners look second to none. Having a black suede headliner, I think, in this car is gonna be sort of the it's gonna be epic. cherry on top. So I actually have to take off for the day. I've been here since this morning. Ricky's starting basically what we call second shift here at Throttle, and uh, I'm gonna leave him the other third of this thing to knock out. Hopefully he doesn't get too dirty. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, you know, I did the best I could, Ricky. I, <laughs> I really did go as fast as I could. But you can see, like, I'm not sure if, like, the, the really yellow stuff is actually residue from our wheel sticking to the existing glue. But I think we can glue over this no problem. I think we'll be okay. We just gotta get the rest of the foam off. So that's enough of me yapping. There ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's get going. All right, guys, so here you have it. I just finished cleaning everything else that Mickey couldn't uh, finish today because he had to take off. I got all the cracks, everything in the center, uh, everything here. So literally everything that wasn't finished completely done to include the small details. Tomorrow, uh, Mickey's gonna pick up the camera and he's gonna put this headliner back together. The next day. All right, well, we're picking back up where we left off on this headliner. We've got it all stripped down as uh, we showed you previously. Got all the old material and foam off. We've got our uh, headliner adhesive here from 3M that we're gonna be using, as well as some suede headliner material with foam backing that we purchased from our friends over at SOS Customs. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a stab at doing this uh, here in our shop. Uh, we did the Subaru one, it was pretty simple. This one's gonna be a little more difficult because of these big recesses here. So we went ahead and grabbed a clothing steamer, which looks like this, and we're gonna use that to sort of persuade the material to do what we want it to do. Hopefully we're able to do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this area, and this is not a how-to, so I'm just gonna jam through this. I'll show you guys along the way. There are plenty of how-to videos out there. If this is something that interests you, um, you can seek those out. Otherwise, I'm just gonna knock this thing out because there ain't nothing to it but to do it. You can do it! So Mickey just got done putting this uh, suede on this beautiful headliner here and I'm just cleaning it, I'm making it look good. So when Victor actually starts shooting it, oh. it looks perfect.
Megan and I just got the sunroof bolted back in with our suede um, sunshade. Is that what you call that thing? Sunshade slider. The uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that slider. So it's in, and now we gotta get the headliner in. So it's just been sitting over here, sort of, I don't know, curing, drying, wait, waiting for us. <laughs> it looks really good, actually. Uh, so the good news is, is we're ready to put this back in. I'm gonna run some water over my hands real quick so I don't get any dirty fingerprints on this thing. And we're gonna toss her in. All right, well, we hope you guys enjoyed the 335i BMW content that we brought you guys. The interior is turning out fantastic. It's definitely a car that I wouldn't mind sitting in the back seat of now, and that's exciting. We also replaced the shifter boot and the e-brake boot that were in previous videos. You guys didn't care for those too much, so we went ahead and just put some stock leather ones back in for the time being, but we do have a plan for that area going forward. Those are just temporary placeholders, but they do look great. So in the next video of this, you're gonna see us driving this car and we're gonna be taking it off to our friends at a local shop that's gonna be doing a walnut blast on the valves. That's a really common thing on these cars. They needed about the 80,000 mile mark. We're well past that, so we're gonna get it done and then this car will be back in here and go under the knife for its final transformation. So stay tuned for that. But before we end this video, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an update on all of the other projects because I've been noticing in the comments section that a lot of you guys are very worried about our Evo, our ice cream van, and our Honda Civic. So I'm gonna give you an update here quickly. We dropped the Evo off at paint. It's now currently up at SOS Customs in Oceanside, California, where we recently selected the paint color. If you haven't seen that video yet, check out the previous Evo video because all the details are in there. They are now currently working on the bodywork. I checked the car out this morning. They already have the roof sprayed for us, and they're gonna have that thing wrapped up by the end of this week. So stay tuned. We will have some Evo content coming up for you guys very soon where we show you the color and hopefully a really nice photo shoot before we start its final transformation. And if you guys are looking for that ice cream truck content, I can tell you that it will be revealed on July 20th here on our channel, as well as our merch drop for the, the ice cream truck merchandise will also be released on July 20th. So if you're, if you're in the market for some new merch, you can check out our site on the 20th and all of that stuff will be live. And last but not least, the Honda Civic, which is right behind me here. We're waiting on some parts for this guys. The, uh, we had to reconfigure some of the rear end suspension componentry and we're working with FCS Race here in Southern California to make us some custom rear trailing arms for the car that are gonna house a bunch of goodies that you guys will see very soon. So that's sort of what we're waiting on at the moment. We are making some progress in the background. I've been staying a couple hours each night and doing a little bit of more chassis work and stuff like that before it goes off the paint. That's the next step. Once we get the FCS parts here, we'll throw those on. The car will then be a roller. We can put it on the trailer and get it off the paint where it's gonna get its final color and then it'll all start coming together. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the update on all of our projects because we know you guys like them all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. We don't want you to miss any of this stuff. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Before we end today's video, I just got home, but I wanted to cover something that I see very often in the comment section. Right now I'm gonna do a build breakdown for where we're at with the interior on the E92. As you guys saw when we first got it, it was in pretty rough condition. And I'm gonna break down all the stuff that we had to purchase. This does not count labor, but all the stuff that we had to purchase to transform the interior to where it is today because Ricky and Mickey are killing it. The interior looks so nice on this car and I can't wait to drive it. So um, first off, we picked up a set of front and rear seats and front and rear door cards from a local junkyard. We paid $500. They aren't the sport seats, so it's not the super desirable seats, but they're in pretty good condition. Door cards are actually in really good condition. Next up on the list is the carbon fiber trim. I ended up finding those on Craigslist, believe it or not, uh, for $600.
we added that bath sound speaker upgrade kit so the speakers were 797 dollars and the subwoofers that we put under the front seats those were 577 dollars all of the parts we picked up from Straight Six, um, the local dismantler here in San Diego, those were about $300 for all those parts. It's all the uppers, all the black trims, uh, all the miscellaneous plastics and stuff that we needed uh, was from those guys at Straight Six. Then we picked up the headliner material. We actually got that from SOS Customs. It's a black suede and it actually has a nice foam backing on it. So it's made for headliners. That was $185. The 3M glue that was used, the adhesive that we used, I actually picked up on Amazon. I think it was about $18 a can. I'd maybe recommend just getting two cans just to be safe. So $36 for the adhesive. Next up on the list is the blue push start button. You can get pretty much any color. I think I got those on Amazon for about $15. And then last but not least, the throttle shift knob, which you should pick up if you have not checked it out. Uh, those, the black Delrin runs for about a hundred bucks. All right, guys, that is going to do it for the build breakdown for this video. I think we saved a ton of money by doing it this way and the interior is looking super fresh. I know that if we had brought this car to a shop and have them redo the interior, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. So we've saved some money. It looks awesome. We, we know that the job was done right because Mickey and Ricky tackled it and I'm super excited to drive the car. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video later.